God made the decision to rid the world of all demons following the Great Flood. But just as he was about to act, Mastima, a strong character, appeared. The enemy, Mastima, pleaded with God to spare some of the demons. Mastima cried out to God, asking him to grant him permission to keep 10% of the devils. Because of the immense evil that the sons of men are capable of, they are meant to corrupt and mislead humanity before God's final judgment. It was God who heard Mestima's prayer. He granted Mestima's plea because he recognized the importance of balance and the function that testing plays in humanity's progress. Mastima became the human test subject after receiving this heavenly approval. His mission was obvious, to test people's beliefs and expose their actual character by challenging and seducing them. The entire globe watched as Mastima released his demons in order to complete his purpose. These evil spirits prowled the world, whispering seductions in people's ears and tempting them to commit corrupt and dishonest deeds. Every difficulty had a purpose. It let God determine who would turn to sin and who would remain firm in their faith. Mastima was sensed in a variety of ways. Similar to a swarm of birds that dropped upon the land during tourist time, bringing sorrow and misery, he sent plagues. However, God was keeping an eye on every act of malice and temptation as part of his divine purpose to try and strengthen humanity. Mastima did his part in this never-ending conflict between good and evil by making sure that people's hearts were always put to the test. Even while his deeds were frequently sinister and upsetting, they served as an essential reminder that virtue and faith must be acquired by hardship and endurance. Mastima's influence continues to affect important events in biblical history in the Book of Jubilees. The testing of Abraham is among the most important of these. Mastima suggests that God test Abraham's obedience and trust, just like Satan asks for permission to test Job in the Book of Job. Mastima then replied, Lord, let us put Abraham to the test and see if his faith in you is genuinely unwavering. When God grants this, Abraham is put to the ultimate test. Isaac, his cherished son, is requested to be sacrificed. Mestima stands in the presence of God, keeping a watchful eye on Abraham as he gets ready to commit this tragic deed. Despite the agonizing test, Abraham maintains his faith. God steps in at the last second, sparing Isaac and confirming Abraham's commitment and allegiance. This is a test for Abraham, but it also shows how merciful God is and how strong Abraham's faith is. Isaac, the son of Abraham, makes a significant vow on his deathbed as he draws closer to the conclusion of his life. According to Isaac, Jacob and his offspring will not be able to be turned away from Yahweh by the demons of Mestima. By saying these things, Isaac guarantees that Mestima's influence won't taint his ancestry. His pledge attests to both the heavenly guardianship over his offspring and the tenacious power of faith. The Book of Jubilees shows the constant conflict between faith and temptation, as well as good and evil, through these stories. Despite the importance of Mestima as a human test, the patriarch's faith endures because it is led and guarded by God's heavenly hand. Mestima is a being whose name indicates hatred in the ancient Book of Jubilees. He is said to as the leader of the Nephilim, a group of demons that were created when fallen angels, known as the Watchers, married human women. But the exact nature of Mestima is left unclear in the Book of Jubilees. Although he is the leader of the Nephilim, it is implied that he may actually be an angel because he exhibits no fear of being imprisoned alongside the other Nephilim. However, he is not specifically listed among God's created angels. The Book of Jubilees frequently blurs the lines between angels and other spirits, leading to a variety of theories regarding Mestima's genesis. Is he an angel, a naphil, or something else completely? The wording lets us think about this puzzle. The Book of Jubilees features a complicated person named Mastima, whose name signifies animosity. Though his name and deeds imply that he is the adversary, his function is more akin to that of the character in the Book of Job, working under God's authority rather than being God's greatest opponent, as Satan is in later traditions. The liar, who appears twice in Jubilees, is frequently associated with Mestima. For this reason, Mestima steps in when God decided to wipe out all the devils following the Great Flood. He begs God to give him the right to keep and command a tenth of the demons. Mestima contends that these demons are required in order to corrupt and mislead people, 
claiming that there is much wickedness in the sons of men. When God granted his request, Mastima uses his heavenly authority to test people. In a different story, Mastima increases the suffering that humanity endures during the days of Turah by sending a plague of birds upon the earth. By these deeds, Mastima reveals his dualistic and complicated nature as he plays the part of an agent of corruption and testimonies while operating within God's predetermined bounds. Mastima is still a major character in most ancient texts, testing and confronting humanity. In the same way that Satan asks for permission to test Job in the book of Job, he advises God to test Abraham. Mastima observes the ordeal while standing in God's presence as Abraham gets ready to sacrifice his son Isaac. Assuring the safety of his family, Isaac makes a vow on his deathbed that the spirits of Mastima will be unable to drive Jacob or his offspring away from Yahweh. The Book of Jubilees retells the tale of Zipporah at the inn, when Yahweh encounters Moses and attempts to murder him. Here, Mastima gets blamed for the attack instead. Mastima is also reported to have supported the Egyptian priesthood opposed to Moses. Mastima is chained to keep him from meddling as the Israelites are ready to depart Egypt. He is later freed, though, to encourage the Egyptians to pursue the Israelites, which ultimately results in their demise in the Red Sea. All the abilities of Mastima are said to have caused the deaths of the firstborn Egyptians. Mastima's dual position as an opponent and a tester is established via these narratives, highlighting his might and the difficulties he poses for God's chosen people. The nature of the Watchers is discussed in the ancient Book of Jubilees, which is honored by Beta Israel and the Ethiopian Orthodox Church. God gave these angels, who were made on the first day of creation, a unique mission. Here, in contrast to the story found in the Book of Enoch, the Watchers are sent to Earth to lead humankind. The Watchers impart their heavenly wisdom to the populace as they descend. However, their good mission quickly takes a sinister turn. They start to have wants for human women, and they violate God's holy commandments when they act on these desires. These unlawful couplings give birth to demonic progeny, who eventually engage in bloody wars to slay each other. The Watchers are confined to the Earth's depths as retribution for their sins, where they still are today. As previously mentioned, Mastima was the commander of the evil spirits and was either a fallen angel or a Nephilim. He reportedly begged God to spare some of the demons that the floods were supposed to destroy, claiming that he needed their assistance in testing people by trying to mislead them. When his request is granted, Mastima assumes leadership of these evil spirits and directs them in their effort to seduce humanity into immorality. Mastima stated, Lord, Creator, please allow a portion of them to stay in front of me, listen to my voice, and follow my instructions. I will not be able to impose my will on the sons of men if some of them are not left to me. Since the sons of mankind are so wicked, these spirits are intended to corrupt and mislead before my judgment. By making this request, Mastima hopes to keep his hold on humanity and ensure that the conflict between good and evil will never end. Thank you for watching.